Um, I know a lot of you have been, have suspected I've been biting my tongue somewhat on the demise and the death of Sinead O'Connor. And I'm also friends with people who are close to her, very close in fact, immediate family. And I didn't want to say anything until I spoke to, to, to you know, to, to, that, to these people and, you know, just didn't feel it wouldn't it would have been disrespectful otherwise. But I was gonna, I was going to start the thing by saying she never did anything to me, but she, she fucking did. But <laughs> uh, I think the name she used for me was the, that cunt in Sligo, which is actually you know okay. But I mean, I I got, I got back other things that she said to me about me to other people. She didn't like me at all, and. Um, we we all know why I'm friends with her ex, and uh, it's very sad, you know, a, a debt for a family. You know, they're still, they're you know, it's no matter what the history is there, when someone dies, there's always a kind of a a sense of all kind of conflict of conflicting emotions, and that's okay. That's normal. Okay, and. Uh, but the situation is happening now where certain people are not are afraid to are not going to her funeral for fear they're going to be in danger by this emerging psychotic histrionic borderline religion that's woke religion religious movement that's developing around her since her death now, I'll be the first to say I never really liked her music. I never seen what the appeal was. And I know that she, you know, she could absolutely sing, but I always found her, the tonal quality of her voice, bombastic, and I didn't. there was always a lack of warmth in it to me. But that's just my personal musical taste. Uh, she was no Kate Bush or Tori Amos or Susie Sue in my eyes, you know, as a singer. And her interpretations of other, you know, like of the Prince song, you know, when Prince died, the man who wrote that song, we've, he's, been, he's in danger of now being forgotten. People are forgetting Prince. Now, a lot of people are in a histriotic state right now, screaming and arm wringing and arm waving. And the funeral in Bray is in County Wicklow is going to be an absolute circus. You're going to have all the the grief tourists and the Irish, uh, the typical Irish with an O showing up and they'll be all singing nothing compares to you or something like that and hoping the tv cameras catch them crying and stuff her house in bray county wicklow has already become a, a religious grotto for a certain kind of purple haired individual and i know these things happen when elvis died the same thing happened it's ironic they were blue rinse parade the brood the buddies called the blue rinse crowd turned out on their thousands went when Elvis died, now <laughs> a different kind of blue rinse crowd is coming out with Sinead O'Connor. Uh, it definitely wasn't, a, well, it doesn't look like a suicide. And uh, the main reason for this would be she would have been the type to have left the manifesto. If she was plan planning to kill herself, she would have left the manifesto. The Jay accused type thing, naming all the people that she hated because that's how she lived her life. She she was she bounced from one vendetta against people one person to the next and again she's dead now so we don't have to talk shit about her but this is the fact that's just an a, 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 an incidental thing in the story her uh, body was there for a few days before she was found and uh it, who knows what you know it, it, she was fully you know needle crafted up the chaxi and had and she had all this I'm then all what's a bad signal today she also had a, a, a drug issue that went back many years so and she held my not never is iconic she did cast a, a huge cultural shadow for whatever reason across like you know Western public culture in the last so many years 
and again, like she, her music and everything flew over my head. I always thought her version of the 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 the, the foggy Jew was an abomination, and uh, I thought it was horrible. It didn't do the, the song any credit. And uh, the definitive version by the the Dubliners and Luke Kelly, uh, and any other like traditional ballad group that did it was the you know was the way it should be done in my way. It it was a it's 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 a warrior it's a warlike song not a a requiem mass really I don't know I just I, but even if it was a, I even like the idea of how the chieftains approached it as a requ requiem mass there's nothing wrong with that but it was it just what the it was someone like Maraid you know Maraid Maraid you know Maraid Brennan from Clannad would have been much better suited vocal for that now. The emerging religion thing I don't that we're seeing now with the arm ringing all over the internet it seems very orchestrated. It is, of course. the The globalists are making a milk a milk making you know a, a a song and dance out of this because she her life and what she represented served the woke agenda very well. Even though she wasn't a particularly bright person, she just only ever knew buzzwords and sort of like catchphrases. There's people out there saying she was a hero for t tying up, uh, tearing up the picture of the Pope on Saturday Night Live, uh, protesting child abuse. Actually, that was her mother's own personal photograph of the Pope that she tore up. She was really protesting her mother and didn't have particularly have a problem with uh, Pope John Paul II, the first, the second, as a as a in particular. It was just everything was just badly thought out and badly done. In terms of that's what her political opinions were like. If you read them in the, I'm not just talking about like public statements she made. Now, but she go. That was the whole premise behind that. Yet she seems to have no problem with female circumcision in Islam, and the the child abuse of child brides in the religion she converted to, which was wasn't a real conversion. The fact that she was saying things like now it's time for the gals to take over, in Islam and stuff like that. I mean, when she said she converted to Islam because. She didn't like white people. Uh, many white Muslims around the world, Bosnians and so on, and Asian Muslims who are as white as she is, said, hold on, excuse me a second. And that's the kind of, the, you know, that's the kind of person she was. She hung out with Rastafarian types who have songs out going about killing gay men for fun. Put a bullet in the batty boy, you know. Uh, so the, the, these, with these contradictions, are very common among the woke and among the ultra left. This is the kind of world they live in. You know, they they turn a blind eye. They might, you know, as a pagan, I don't care about cat Christians or Muslims or anything. But they will, they you know, they'll they'll have a go at Catholics over child abuse, but turn a blind eye to the child abuse and things like Buddhism, which is horrific. The child the, the child abuse in Buddhism would 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 and the Buddhist temples would put the Catholic Church to say shame or you know or in Islam but because it's 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 not politically correct. So they're full of they're full of you know paradoxes based largely on low intelligence and they're not very I've never I don't think I've ever met a lefty person of the modern left, sort of like the 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 post the cultural Marxist left who had any level of intelligence or were well read or anything like that. Everything was just buzzwords and catchphrases and name calling. And uh you know, she was one of those types. And that's that was her dharma, that was her destiny on this earth. At the same time, I have to acknowledge that her music brought an awful lot of happiness to people who enjoyed her records and didn't do it for me, but, you know, that's, as it says, personal taste. But I really do believe that it's an extremely significant event, especially in Ireland. For starters, this, I want to say something to you Irish woke who go on about, you know, we lost the, the Irish woke, oh, Irish alt community, you know, the ones who are, you know, who would be typical of people who would be on the sort of like, what they call a conser conservative, the calling side of the things, what in a traditional Ireland back calling her a hero. She was the patron saint of the destruction of the Irish culture and the Irish nation in terms of, say, like, she rose up in the 80s uh, at the end of the Catholic thing, became a kind of a, 
an avatar of the destruction of the the, the, the old Catholic Ireland, which was which was well on its way out by then anyway. That's a myth that like the the Catholic Church had power in Ireland in the eighties. It didn't. I, I mean, I I I mean, I, I grew. I was a teenager back then. I grew. I went fucking nuts, and it was we never thought about what the Pope or anything like that or sins or anything. Didn't even didn't even know. Didn't even bother. You know, it wasn't even in our dialogue. The the, the Catholic Church hadn't really had any power in Ireland since the late maybe even the mid fifties. Real power. It'd been in decline ever since, ever since Noel Brown, and uh, who lefties wouldn't even know who that was, you know, they, even though he was a, so, a Irish socialist, they wouldn't even know who he was because they don't know anything other than buzzwords and catchphrases and throwing insults at people. But she epitomised that world, that sort of like upper middle middle and upper class establishment cultural Marxist, because she came from a very wealthy background. Don't, you know, this whole, this, this is what I'm, the Americans, when I see Americans, they talk about it like she grew up on a farm being whipped by a priest uh, walking around on bare feet. She grew up in a very wealthy, affluent area from a very wealthy family and went to the most exclusive new town or new park down in, in Waterford, the most exclusive public liberal school run by Quakers. Uh, this whole fantasy of her being a tortured Catholic is just purely a figment of her own imagination. Because it's it, that that is part of the wokey the wokey thing you know the wokey if the, you know middle class people literally wokeism is middle class people inventing problems and victimization that didn't actually happen so that's why you have so many of them saying I'm a woman or I'm a man or I'm a victim you know uh, this is all this that, that that's she in in the Irish version of that now uh, you know and these people are going to swarm around her funeral. And people that have been very close to her in her life, who she's attacked over the years, are going to be afraid to go to that funeral uh, for the reason that the Purple Heart Brigade, uh, the, you know, the, the, the Cenobites who will be there howling and ring, ran, you know, wailing and arm ringing would actually attack them. And so Because we're, we're seeing a kind of a weird kind of flagellistic uh, religion developing around her. Uh, the internet is, is impossible to, at the moment, and that's uh, and you know it, she's on the cover of everything now for the simple reason that the globalists want her on the cover. A part of me would, would even wonder if they actually killed her off, so they could make her a martyr of of wokeism and this whole internationalism and this whole kind of like cultural Marxism. I mean, I'm just I'm not saying they did. I'm just saying you you do wonder, and uh, so the the the, the funeral will be, will be farcical. You'll have all the Irish white trash normies alongside the purple haired brigades all singing nothing compares to you. And uh, the, re the flags will be in the rainbow flags will be flying and, the, and all this kind of thing. And it, it'll be just pure farce. And uh, cir media circus. And uh, I have no qualms about saying this because that's what it will be. I'm not the one behind it. I, I'm, if anything, you know, I, I, I'm not living off her, her corpse the way they will. You know, you know, looking for virtue and things like that, but uh, looking for attention. And um, yeah, it's terrible. I mean, they, they, she does have children. I'm not going to. I know about the relationship between her and her children, and believe me, it's very different than the Holy Mother of Mary image that the media are currently portraying. You know, based on interviews in 1994 and whatever. And uh, but that's I'm le I'll leave it at that. And uh, but that's at the end of the day, it's still their mammy, you know, it's still their mammy, and there were there would have been good times and bad times, and like I said, these. So that, I think if 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 we lived in an, a society that wasn't psychotic, that would be a quiet family funeral. Uh, but no, you're going to have all the virtue signalers down there with their arms ringing and screaming, and making sure the camera sees them in their states of hysteria. Uh, because that's the insane world we live in for now. And that's what this video is really like. I'm not putting her down. I mean, I don't have a... I wasn't bothered when she called me those names. And uh, because I knew where they were coming from. And I knew they weren't really malicious. It was just uh, something she felt she had to do. And uh, I have no ill will against her personally. But I do dislike the people who are uh, making a meal out of her martyrdom. Her beatification. Uh, because there's, there's a reason for this. They're playing into the globalist agenda that has actually destroyed the culture of this country. And I'm not talking about multiculturalism. I'm not talking about 
anything like that. I'm talking about there was something about the Irish up until the 1990s where we had a beautiful naivety about us. We were very, very loving and welcoming people, especially to people from overseas. And the globalists completely destroyed that, completely destroyed that. And so in many ways, she represents the patron saint of that. That that transition of Ireland from being a kind of an almost innocent country of good natured people to the place we have today where the streets aren't safe. Nobody is particularly happy and any kind of spiritual or sort of like moralistic or human decency feeling is not expressed through acts of helping someone in need but by talking about how much you support you know transitioning and you know non-gender toddlers coupled with uh waving a flag with rainbow colors on him i think she was very much the avatar for that and with her demise and i hope you know and this whole thing of her being a tortured individual you know she was born with a silver spoon in her mouth and like so many of those types of people the problems were self-made and yeah i'm sure she was a deeply unhappy person but she did she never really saw this you know tried to sort it out other than converting to different with Rastafarians or wherever. And I, and I mean, I think the main reason she, she didn't like me is because I made a video once saying that she's converted to every single religion except Irish paganism. She's looked at everything except Irish, and yet she's supposed to be a hero of Ireland when she's always looking to the Middle East and, play, and, and Jamaica to amplify her Irish identity. I didn't understand that. Not as anything against the Middle East or Jamaica, but you know what I'm saying. And... So the circus will be utterly obnoxious at the funeral, utterly, and the media will make a meal of it. And, uh, you know, I do hope her soul, wherever she is now, does find that transcendental, you know, as a pagan, I, there's no such thing as heaven or hell for me. And there's reincarnation, and maybe in her next return, she'll find... Uh, a better path to express uh, the fortunate blessings that she was given from the time she was a child rather than pretending she was a victim all her life while she was um you know she was born into a wealthy family had a silver spoon in her mouth never had a day of hardship really and then signed the major record deal when she was 19 uh, whatever she was and became a multimillionaire very quickly and uh you know, maybe her next life, if that gift is given to her again in a different form, she'll uh, she'll make better use of it for herself and the people around her. The, but I think the woke Ireland is dead with her. I think her debt is the end of the Ireland of hate speech laws produced by politicians to protect themselves. Rampant political correctness. Uh, university professors encouraging young children to transition and all the other nonsense. I think this is very much part of the wave function collapse. And uh, she is basically, you know, I, 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 I can see, we're going back to the pre 9-11 world and her debt is part of that. And uh, I mean, this will play out over the time to come. But at the same time, too, even, you know, even in her worst state, she was one of these people that made the world industry interesting. So that's like, you know, again, I'm not I could sit here and trash her. But I know people who she knew very closely, who had to write their memoirs and because as soon as they died, she'd be all over the newspapers trashing them like she did in the past with no respect for her the grieving families or anything well the biggest lesson here of all is let's not trash her but let's point to the bizarre cult and religion developing around her debt as a symbol of the woke world the woke world coming to an end and that's it that's it that's really all i have to say and uh, 
I'm not going to start falling to my knees and screaming, oh, Sinead, oh, Sinead, like so many lunatics have been in the last week. Dave Fanning had mentioned that some of her albums were dodgy, meaning they weren't very good. Lots of every band has made albums that isn't very good. And there were people saying, this bastard must be destroyed. And these are people that probably don't even have one Sinead O'Connor in their house. And that's, uh, I think those type of people with that kind of visceral, woke, psychotic reaction, they're going to, it's their funeral too in Bray. Just watch. And uh, like I said, Sinead O'Connor, no ill feelings, but you know, maybe next time.